Hello, this is Miles Luigi. You may remember back a while ago after I fought an enemy, they dropped this badge, a Power Rush Partner badge. They just dropped it. It just wasn't, you know, something I got out of a treasure chest or, you know, bought or actually earned. It's just something that randomly dropped off an enemy. Keyword, randomly drops. This episode is Badge Hunting Part 1, Randomly Drops. My goal of this episode was to play Paper Mario and a Thousand Year Door, run through the Twilight Trail over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, for until a Hyper Goomba, Hyper Para Goomba, or Spiked Hyper Goomba, one of those guys happened to drop a charge badge. In the description, wherever this is, there will be a link to a topic on GameFAQs.com that kind of explains the process. Now, I don't quite have the exact perfect tool to do badge something completely effectively, but it still can be done at this point in the game, the whole idea. You fight groups of enemies for until they drop the badge. Until they randomly drop the badge. Let's jump into some videos, shall we? Welcome to about hour three of footage. By this point, let's just put this in context. I basically gave myself an entire day span to do this where I basically woke up really early. One morning, plan on doing some side stuff while playing Paper Mario 1000 Your Door all day long to do this. This is about hour 3 in. What I've been doing is I've been just going through this little section here with all the hyper enemies. If I didn't find the badge, I just simply hit the reset button. Um, soft reset on the GameCube, by the way, is start BX. Totally useful. At this point, I was sick of the badge not dropping, so I decided to become a little bit creative and um, get a star piece and head on back to get a badge that might actually help with badge hunting. A badge to help with badge hunting? Yes, it does actually supposedly exist in the game. Sadly, for until someone disassembles this game, there can be no concise, complete proof, but many people do agree this badge does help with the process. And it's time for Item Hog! It says it makes items likely to appear after battle. Um, Item Hog, in my experience, tends to drop a series of like items that normally doesn't drop off an enemy and increases the likelihood of items the enemy normally drops as well. And allegedly this does help with badge hunting and I can't really say it doesn't. All signs point to it does, so I decided to grab it. So despite the purpose of this video, we do actually make some small progress today. For example, I talked to the sh shopkeeper and the shop is open and... I honestly think I just... yeah, I just managed my items. More fast forward. Once you start getting later in the game, like for example now, here's where ink coupons can actually become really useful because it normally costs 10 coins to use the inn here, use an ink coupon, free stay at the inn, and Twilight Town Inn is... a well, it's a uh, inn that gives you an item after you're sleeping in this. In this case, it's a peachy peach. Obviously, it'll be used for future cooking. Okay, so yeah, here's me just throwing on item hogs. And getting ready to do more badge hunting for the charge badge. Okay. So now we're about six and a half hours into the recording. You can kind of imagine six and a half hours. I'm really peeved off. I think this is right after I got like my third or fourth last stand badge because the Hyper Goombas have been dropping a lot of last stand badges and no charge badges. I was getting really peeved off. I have the brilliant idea. Why don't I try fighting the Hyper Cleft instead? Um, Hyper Cleft, however, is located in the Twilight Trail, which means we actually get to do some progress today. Roll underneath the log, and look at that, a giant haystack. Giant haystack in your way, what do you think we have to do? Blow it away and find a star piece underneath it. Star piece and a giant stack of hay. And Mario found it, but he can't find a charge badge. Shake fist. Okay, so, um, crazy daisy. I, I want to avoid them for now. I'll get back to them and a bunch of stuff that I'm purposely missing in this trail. Plenty enough, um, just to let you guys know. Well, I'll be running back and forth on this trail a lot, so I'm, I'm not going to miss anything. But one thing I won't miss is what's in here. Da -da -da -da, it's hammer throw! Throw a hammer at the enemy, no matter where the frick they are! Oh my gosh. 
just in some battles where there's that stupid flying enemy or stupid ceiling enemy, it's one of those gosh darn enemies or in a hammerman setup, this badge just is phenomenally useful to have on in those situations. Um, other than that, though, um, can sometimes find itself to be useless, but you know what? It's hammer throw. You know when it's useful. Stupid enemies on the ceiling. Alright. So more scary background magic is, for some reason, pushing the small block in the background pushes the larger block in the foreground. As if there is a symmetrical relationship between the two. Do I get in battle with this hypercleft? No, I, I avoid that one. Okay. It doesn't matter how long I futz around, you know. I'm never going to become a pig. I'm the protagonist. I can't be fallen to curses like that that would cause an instant game over. Or can I? Oh, scary thought. Floundering around for stupid charge badge. I'm literally cursed. Um, but before we start fighting hyperclefts to monotony, let's uh, get some paddles. So in case you couldn't already tell from that hammer whack, and I do have a power plus on, these guys have a lot of defense, and they can become really powerful, so all in all, they're a tough enemy, and of course they have spikes on their head, but you wanna know what? They're weak to Quake Hammer! Oh yeah, Piercing Blow also works pretty good. Um, super guards help a lot, otherwise you're taking 9 damage. 8 damage if you guard the attack. Super guard, people! Say hello to the next monster. Yes, that flower is a monster! Crazy Daisy looks cute, sings a lullaby, you go to sleep. To be honest, they could really serve a really useful function in today's sleep-deprived society, but you know what? This is a battlefield, and I don't want to fall asleep on the battlefield. Oh, heck yes. And drats, nothing but coins. <laughs> now before you ask, Miles Luigi, did you really spend 12 hours of your life to no avail playing Paper Mario Thousand in your door? The answer is no. I decided to save one thing that I got doing this, and it's a pretty good thing, too. Alright, there's no way in hell I'm throwing that away. <laughs> That's my reward for playing this game 12 hours fighting enemies straight in a row. So with that, I'm going to leave you a fast forward montage of the whole entire thing, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. This is Miles Luigi.